Here we are in January of 2025, and perhaps you've heard about this planetary alignment that we're expecting to see in the night sky. Well, I just wanna show you what that actually is gonna look like and how you can see these planets in the night sky and uh, and just give you a realistic sense of, of what to expect. So here I've set the sky in Stellarium, this uh, free program um, for January 21. And let's just uh, go to sunset and we'll see what, what we can expect to see in the sky, how you can see this uh, quote unquote planetary alignment. And I just wanna tell you like why it's special um, but also be a little realistic about what, what you should expect to see. So now notice as the sun is setting in the west, the very first thing we're gonna see is Venus. Venus is obviously a planet, but it appears as an incredibly bright star in the sky. Um, and so that's the first thing you'll see. And as we wait until it gets a little later, you'll see the kind of alignment that you've heard in the news, which is that Venus and Saturn will be quite close in the sky. Now, how close really are they together? Let's see, is the moon is the moon up at all for reference? Uh, no, it's not. But, you know, it looks to me like that is a few moon widths apart. Okay, so it's not like they're right on top of each other, but certainly near each other in the sky. Now, Venus is way brighter than any of the other stars in the sky. Saturn will look like a, a bright star, but not the brightest object in the sky. So that's a, a handy way to definitely know that you're looking at Saturn is by looking at that super bright Venus and seeing the other planet just beneath it. Now, when we talk about this alignment, really what's the other, the other planets are not right next to that in the sky. In fact, they're on the other side of the sky. So for reference, here's the Orion constellation, which is really quite large. I mean, if you stuck out your arm uh, and held your hand stretched out, you know, your full hand would cover uh, the Orion constellation, roughly speaking. So it's a big, a big region of the sky. And you can see that Mars is way here over on the east. So as Venus and, and Saturn are setting, Mars will be rising in the east. And then Jupiter, which will also appear as a very bright star, uh, will be more overhead looking straight up from, from Orion. Now, why is this special? What's, what's special about this is in any given night, um, you, might, you might see one planet right? Um, but what's special right now is that, you know, of the planets in our solar system, there's only a handful that are actually visible to you, right? You can't see Uranus and Neptune. You can only see, uh, very rarely, you can see Mercury, very rarely, you gotta kind of have to know how to see it. So really, all you can see is Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, right? And what we have tonight is Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So all four of those planets are visible. And from day to day, the planets move. So I can actually skip forward one day at a time here. Let's see if I can do that. There's a day skipping 24 hours ahead, skipping another 24 hours ahead. No, that's a whole week. I just skipped a whole week. So by skipping a few weeks, you can see what happens here is Venus and Saturn are now drifting further apart. And, but all of them are still visible. So even in a couple of weeks, we're still gonna see all these planets, but if I go a month from now, maybe maybe here's a month, all right? And I go a little more forward in time, you can see that at sunset, now Saturn is barely visible, right? And so now we're only gonna be seeing Venus, Jupiter, and Mars, but you're gonna hear more news about this. In fact, if I keep skipping forward a week at a time, you know, look how Mars and Jupiter are going to start getting kind of closer together. So you might hear in the news later this winter or even into the spring, oh, you know, the alignment of Mars and Jupiter. But what's what's particularly special about right now is that you have these four bright, um, bright planets that are all visible in the sky at the same time. Not right next to each other, but at the same time. Now, to understand what's going on and why why this is happening, I think it's kind of cool to see to see this simulation. This is also free. This is from Eyes on the Solar System. It's a NASA website, and it just is a simple way to visualize all the orbits in our solar system. It can also show the positions of spacecraft and other cool things, and you can go forward and back in time. This again is set right now for January 21. So I just want to give you like, what, why are we seeing these planets? Like what, what's special about this alignment? So here are the planets we're, we're interested in. We've got Saturn up at the top, Jupiter. We have Mars right here, Earth and Venus. So what you have to do is you have to kind of like put yourself Put yourself right there on Earth, right where we are, and imagine the view looking out into space from 
from Earth, the blue circle. So, so um, you could see, kind of like we saw in Solarium, Mars is over here by Jupiter, over on the left, that was in the east, right? Whereas Venus and Saturn are over here on this, on this part, right? In fact, I can even zoom in to Earth and then look out. And I'm looking actually not at Earth right now. I'm kind of looking past the Earth at these lines in the background to see where are these planets. Oh, look at that. There's Venus and Saturn next to each other, their orbit, in their orbits. And then a little further apart are, there's, no, I can't see that one. Where's, there's Mars. And there's Jupiter, right? So we can see that what we're seeing, oh, that's, that's a better way to do it. There's Jupiter and Mars, and then over there is Venus and Saturn. So what we're seeing is really just a reflection of where these planets are in their orbits. And as time goes forward, right, I can actually set time forward here with this uh, little simulator if I turn on the interface. As time goes forward, whoop, whoop, don't go too much, right? Now look what just happened. Earth is now over here, and Saturn now is being blocked by the sun, basically. That's why we're not seeing Saturn at night, because Saturn's going to be in the same direction as the sun. And if I go forward more, right, let's keep it going, then eventually Earth is going to be back over on the other side, same side as Saturn, and Saturn will be up in the night. So all these crazy motions that we see in our night sky, all these apparent alignments of the planets, they're really just a reflection of the physical position of the planets in their orbits. Anyway, so I think it's pretty cool. Uh, more than anything that I hope you take away is that this is one of the rare times where you can go out, you know, it happens once every few years where you can go out and see the four brightest planets all at the same time in the night. Um, so, you know, it's not like a once in a century kind of thing. It did happen years and years ago. I do remember when I was, I want to say in college, where the, where the four bright planets were actually really close to each other. And you can use simulations like this to try to find when, when would that happen. So, for example, if I go forward and I find when Jupiter and Saturn are right next to each other in the sky, kind of like that, right? And then I go forward a little or backward a little bit to when Mars is also lined up roughly with that. You see what I'm doing here? I'll zoom in a little bit, see? And if I can actually find when do Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn all line up like this, right? And I want and I want Earth in the mix. So how do I, I have to go back a little more to when Earth is here, whoop. You know what I'm saying? So you can kind of try to find when are these alignments, and they those are much more rare, where they're right next to each other in the sky. Those are like once every, you know, 50 to 100 year kind of, kind of events. All right, so I hope you find that interesting. You can definitely play with these kind of simulations yourself and um, explore the night sky and do all kinds of fun things. But I just want to kind of show you what's what's actually going on in our night sky.